everyone and welcome back to the D-Hard House. My name is Alicia and I'm your host of this crafty channel here on YouTube. I'm so glad you could join me today. By the way, a uh, big shout out to new subscribers to the channel. Welcome. <laughs> uh, yeah, so today is April 10th and I'm super behind on filming my March video. Yeah, I'm... Ugh. So we're like a third of the way through April and I'm now filming my March video, which is really late and I'm sorry for the delay, but uh, is it just me or does springtime always seem way busier than any other time of the year? Like, I feel like Christmas is usually really busy, especially for us crafters who like to make gifts. But this feels busier in the sense that I feel like my brain is really busy with projects. And so while I'm not necessarily doing much, it seems like my wheels are turning like crazy in my head and it's consuming all of my energy. I don't know. Do you feel the same way? Uh, so I do, even though I'm not doing, it doesn't seem like I'm doing a lot. Uh, I do have some projects to show you of things that I worked on in March. And... Um, I have a test knit out right now, so huge shout out to my test knitters who are working on that project, uh, which has not been easy because I had quite a few mistakes in the pattern. So let me just say that I have the best test knitters working on this project, ironing out all of those wrinkles. So thank you so much for your, your patience, your messages, and just working out those issues. I really appreciate it. Honestly, I don't know what I would do without you. I'd release a pattern that no one would understand. That's what would happen. So <laughs> thank you for helping me not do that. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Oh, just general life stuff, like what's going on in the d -Hard house, because it's exciting and busy and all of the things, so. So did I finish any projects in March? No, I didn't. <laughs> uh, but I did knit two socks, not a pair though, uh, of my new pattern that is out for test knitting. So I have a uh, longer sock in this beautiful red color and I have a shorty sock in green. So they're both using uh, my new pattern, uh, but obviously they do not make a pair. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I just love these colors. You can see that. Uh, so I have a solid red color that I'm using. It's a little bit tonal, and I love it. Um, and then I have this variegated yarn that I'm using with it. So it's primarily gray with specks of like pink and green. And so it just looks very uh, deep and rich, and I love it. So that's what I have here. And then this other one... <laughs> Um, and this time the gray is solid, and this is pretty solid, uh, this gray, and then the green is what has the tonal bits in it. So I just really love this pattern where you have a solid uh, with a variegated or tonal, variegated is the word I was looking for, um, yarn. So it just adds that extra richness and almost like a texture to the pattern. The pattern already has texture, but I feel like it adds to that texture. Anyway, I love it. I think they're so cool. Um, so I decided to name this pattern um, Saginaw. So uh, I am originally from Michigan, born and raised in Michigan. 
and uh, there is a town in Michigan called Saginaw. Uh, but when uh, my husband and I were on a road trip, we live in Washington State now. Uh, so we went on a road trip for a spring break down to Northern California. And along the way, there was an exit sign that said Saginaw. And I was like, what? I'm knitting on these socks while we were in the car. And I thought, oh, that'd be great um, name for this pattern. So it is named after technically a, a city in Michigan, but a sign I saw, I think, was it in Oregon? Or was it in Washington? I don't know. They all blur together in my mind. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's uh, Saginaw socks, just kind of a nod to my home state and um, just the eclectic language um, in Michigan. There are many uh, French inspired names, English inspired names, uh, and Native American inspired names. And Saginaw is uh, a Native American inspired name. Uh, if, I if I remember correctly, and if I'm wrong, I'll have to put text on the screen. Just a just a nod to my uh, where I grew up and I would love to go back and visit someday because it's been a long time since I've stepped foot on Michigan soil so um, again I super appreciate my test knitters who are working on this um, so when they are finished uh, and we get all of those wrinkles ironed out uh, this is going to get released on Ravelry, so you'll be able to get a copy for yourself. Um, anticipated date for that is going to be early May. So, yeah, you can look forward to that. So I did finish two socks in the month of March, but not a pair. Uh, I did start the second sock of the red and this is as far as I got. And then my mind had its creative juices going at that point. And then I was on to the next project. So I had to cast it on because I had this thought in my head. And I knew if I, if I wrote it down and waited a month to look at it, it wouldn't make sense. So I just um, took yarn and needles and just went with it. So I put the socks on pause uh, to work on a different project. So uh, let me grab that. So that other project is a, uh, a baby blanket. Uh, between the socks, which I had to think about, um, had to be very careful with details, um, and, the, and the sweater that I'm working on, which I'm going to show you next. Um, I don't know, it just felt like all the knitting was going really slowly. And then I really just wanted that, what's the phrase, potato chippy knit. Where it's just like, you basically just knit and there's not much thinking. You just go and, and I could just do the process. And I, want, I was really wanting something like that. So I just cast on and went with it. So, um, so let me show you. I, I did not finish this in March. I did technically finish this in April, <laughs> but it's done now. I can't go back in time. Uh, but if you follow me on Instagram, I'm dhardhouse on Instagram, uh, I've been posting pictures of this. So this was my basically my spring break knitting. <laughs> um, spring break was in March, but I, I carried it over and finished it later. So it's a corner to corner knit blanket. And I've got, it's not just garter stitch, uh, 
but it's potato chippy enough that it's totally fine. So let me, there you go. Oh, it's so cute. I love it. <laughs> so uh, I feel like this color combination right here is got the best um, contrast. So you can see the stripes really well. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I love buying these balls of uh, Lion Brand Mandala. And so what I did, uh, this is two balls of Lion Brand Mandala. This label is particularly large. Uh, but these two colors are both of their ombre variety. So um, they're thicker. Uh, they're a heavier weight yarn than the usual <laughs> mandala. Uh, but I bought these two together so you can see the color, the color sequence here. So one's more pink and one is more purple but they still have these um, uh, dark bits in them. And so the colors are, the one that's more pink is called Felicity. And then the one that's more purple is called Joy. Yeah. So these are um, worsted weight. got the four there in the skein. I know it's too blurry for you to see. I'm sorry. Uh, and they were a little bit generous. I'm starting to get in the habit now of actually weighing the skeins and writing down the actual weight. Um, the tags, of course, are, are always going to be a close estimate, but it's nice to, to know if you actually have less. I feel like it's it's way more important to know if you have less yarn than the label says um, than to know if you have more. But uh, but they were both a little bit over, five grams over and six grams over. So that was very nice. Uh, but this is worsted weight. Usually the mandala I work with, like that rainbow up there, um, are a, a three, which is a sport weight or decay. Um, so this was thicker. So I did use the recommended needle size on the label is a seven. And I believe that's what I used. Um, yeah, so because it is worsted weight and not sport, um, you know, you don't get as much yardage because uh, they're the same weight. You get 150 grams of the other as well. So this blanket is definitely on the small size. Um, now, I do have yarn left over. Let me grab it. I definitely have yarn left over that I could have added more to this blanket, but... Um, you know, I weighed it and I tried going to about half. I say about half. I don't like going to exactly half because what if I get to the end and I can't bind off the four stitches? What do I do? Right? I'm not gonna... Anyway, um, so I may be a little bit too overcautious, but I mean, if you look at this yard, how much would I have added to this blanket in all honesty? not that much and i did notice both of these skeins had knots tied in them where uh, i do notice this is not the color repeat that should have been next so i'm kind of glad that i did end it where i ended it because it would have looked weird to have more of this color showing up down here and just being completely out of sync with sequence with the other half of the blanket because at some point it should have gone into this darker color here but there is none of that in here it would have gone back into this light section again so it would have gone like it's it goes into the darker purple here and then it would have gone back to the lighter purple so it would have just been off balance color wise so 
it's a blessing in disguise. Um, but the main objective was that, um, one, I want to use up yarn in my stash. I want to, it looks beautiful on the shelf and I have skeins that have been on the shelf for a really long time. Um, but that's not actually my goal when I buy them. My goal is to create objects out of them that I can uh, share with you all. Um, this is a baby blanket that uh, will probably get donated. Um, so anyway, so I am going to try blocking this and see if it can grow a little bit. Understanding that this is uh, definitely a human constructed fiber. Yeah, it's a hundred percent acrylic. So it is not a, um, a wool. Um, so it's not going to be conducive to blocking, but I'm going to try it anyway, because it should be washed anyway. So I'll wash it and block it and see if it helps at all. I still need to weave in the ends. Uh, but yeah, I just, this idea was in my head and I just needed to get it worked out. The beautiful yarn was sitting there. It was spring break. I wanted happy, bright colors. I mean, this was just great. So this was super nice to take with me on that road trip. And the colors are just, I think they're so cute. <laughs> anyway. So it is finished now. I'll probably show it again in my April video because technically I finished it in April. But while we're talking about this blanket, I have already picked out the next colors <laughs> for another one. Uh, my last baby blanket, which was also knit quarter to quarter, uh, I wrote up the pattern and I created a tutorial video. And if you're interested, you can find that video on this channel. It's my favorite baby blanket. <laughs> so uh, what I'm going to do is make another tutorial video for this blanket pattern. And so I chose these two. I just, I, I don't know. I'm still not bored with this idea, but at some point I came up with the idea of taking two self-striping yarns and working them together just to create like a whole new color palette. And I just find that super fun and exciting. And I'm not bored with it yet. I hope you're not bored with it yet. <laughs> uh, but these are the two I'm going to pair together. So this one with the beautiful yellow in it, the colorway is called Serpent. Um, so it has yellow and this like, um, uh, almost like a dark periwinkle. It's like a bluish gray. And then this tan brown, white, and yellow. Um, and then this colorway is called Dragon. And so it has blue and a couple shades of green, a couple shades of brown. Uh, and I think they're just going to pair really nicely, so... I'm excited. So uh, I set this aside and I've been waiting to cast it on because I need to do the cast on in a video as a part of the tutorial video. So I can't start this project unless I'm willing to start recording as well. So, so the other project on my needles is a sweater and I finished the it's a cardigan. In fact, I have a picture of it here in the pattern. It is called Mellow by Camilla Vaud, and it's this beautiful cardigan sweater. It's knit flat. Everything's knit flat. Um, and so what I've done is I've knit the, um, the body portion, and now I'm on to the sleeves. And then the last thing I'll need to do is the um, the trimming here, right? The uh, button band, but there are no buttons on it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, the the edge here and the collar. 
But yeah, I'm on the sleeves. So most of the knitting is done, but you see this is the part where the momentum starts to slow down and no surprise, it has, the momentum has slowed down. Um, I'm, I do remember last video, I said I can't let this month go by without knitting on this thing or I'm afraid it'll be one of those things that never gets finished. So, uh, three weeks into March, I had realized, oh crap, I have not knit on that sweater, and I said that I absolutely needed to. So in the last week of March, I did knit this much of a sleeve. <laughs> that's it, that's it. I know, um, whatever. So it's starting from the cuff. I think I can call that the cuff. Uh, and then going up the arm so you can see it's it's getting there. Um, it's coming along very smoothly. It's fitting well around my arm, as you can see. I have not ever accessing memory files. I have not ever seemed a garment before. Um, this project has a lot of firsts in it, which is also a big reason why this is going slowly. Um, I did yarn substitutions. I um, changed stitch counts. So this is a, a thinking heavy project for me because I made all those changes, which is fun. I, don't get me wrong. I love all of this experimenting and like, what if I do this and what if I do that? It's lovely, but it does slow down the process um, because uh, I have to pause and, and think about things. But yeah, that's my progress is I've knit up a good chunk of my forearm <laughs> of one of the two sleeves. So, yeah. Um, like I said, I <laughs> that baby blanket is what I needed to like recharge my batteries um, because between the sock design, which is me designing, right? It's a lot of thinking, taking notes, um, considerations, writing about it. And then I took someone else's pattern and decided to change it, which means thinking about things, taking notes, right? So these are really thought heavy projects I've loaded onto my plate. I've got this spinning project that I haven't touched at all this month. Um, I caked up the yarn to do a knitting gauge swatch and I haven't even done that. So I've, I've got, you know, all these big, heavy thinking projects I loaded on my plate all at once and I've gotten to the analysis paralysis uh, point that I needed something to cleanse my palate uh, and that baby blanket was really uh, really fantastic for that so uh, I'm very excited <laughs> um, to to get back into this again I keep you know, uh, get, getting dressed for work and going, gosh, that cardigan would look really nice with this outfit, but it's nowhere near finished yet. Uh, and it'll be summer before we know it. So it'd be nice if I could get um, this sweater off the needles before it gets really hot. So since the last time I saw you all, um, it changed from March to April, by the way. <laughs> but uh, we wrapped up uh, at work. We wrapped up winter quarter. At school uh, in between winter quarter and spring quarter is spring break it's a week and a half uh, of no school except you can't escape emails honestly over spring break because uh, people have questions about wrapping up and people have questions about starting the next term so it's really not a break I mean it's a break in the sense that I did not have to go to physically be at work but I couldn't like completely 100% check out um, but yeah, so we did go, um, down to Northern, Car Northern California, not Carolina, <laughs> <laughs> wrong, 
wrong coast, North Carolina <laughs> to visit um, Michael's mom and uh, hung out there for a few days. So that was, it was nice to get out of the house. You know, we've been teaching remotely um, for a while and then kind of went back in person. And so it was just nice to get out of the house for a few days. It was very refreshing and seeing family and visiting, it, it was great. Uh, and now we're back and I'm, I've got one class that meets in person, the other two are online, but it means I go to work every day. So I can do work from my work office instead of my sewing desk. Sadly, that means I haven't been in this room very much, um, but that's okay. Uh, I get to do work at work without all these beautiful colors staring at me saying, knit with me. <laughs> uh, so I'm able to focus and get work done and it's been, it's been great. And of course it's been great to see people again and have little conversations and, and just see how everyone's doing. So it's been great. Um, a big thing happened with our house this past week and that is uh, we got solar panels put on our house. And I'll put in some pictures here. Uh, this work was done the first two days of class. So it was like, oh. see, I wanted to record this episode that weekend um, before it was, it was last weekend. But see, we had to get the house ready to have a crew here to be able to get up in the attic, to be in the garage, messing with the um, breaker box. Uh, to be on the outside of the house and like what do we do with Marjorie our dog while the crew is here and someone's got to be home and it was just it was super busy so I could not sit down and record that podcast this episode which is why I'm doing it this weekend um, the work is done um, solar panels are up they're starting to generate energy uh, all we need is for the inspector to come Make sure everything's up to code, good to go. And then the power company will come, install the meter, flip the switch, and then there we go. We will be generating our own energy from all of the sunlight that hits uh, our roof. And I'm really excited about it, <laughs> especially since, you guys, the sun is out now. It's the perfect season to be turning on the solar panels because they're just going to be soaking it all up. So um yeah so it's been pretty busy and honestly i've been it's been tough for me to knit while watching tv because like i said earlier i just feel like my wheels are turning with all these you know don't forget to do this and don't forget to do that and oh uh, what about this pattern and what about this stitch and how do i change the stitch count for the sleeves and it's just been so much that um, I have sat in front of the TV with no knitting, I think five days now. I've gone five days without knitting because I'm just like, what do I do? What do I do? And this doesn't happen to me very often, this analysis paralysis, but it's it's a real thing. So, um, So now that I've filmed this episode, I feel like I'll be able to to move forward. This is just part of the process. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Other than the, the tulips in the front yard are blooming and the daffodils are just about to open up. It looks so pretty in that flower bed. I planted those bulbs last fall and I wasn't sure if they were gonna actually come up and bloom and they they have and they look beautiful um but other than that um you know that's pretty much it so it's time for me to pick a winner for the giveaway and also announce the next giveaway so each month on the channel i give something away uh and it happens during these monthly makes videos so I am going to be drawing a random winner from the comments on last month's video, uh, which would be February makes. 
Uh, and to enter for the next drawing, all you have to do is comment on this video, the March makes. Uh, and I do not have a prompt for you. All I want you to do is leave a comment about basically anything. <laughs> um, say hello, comment on something discussed in this video, or share something that's been going on in your life this spring or fall, depending on where you are in the world season you're experiencing. I mean, for all I know, it's winter somewhere. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so just leave a comment below. And then in the next vid in the April makes video, I will draw a random winner. Um, so the prize uh, is going to be a pattern off of Ravelry. So you can pick a pattern up to a $10 value. That's US dollars. Um, so the winner will send me a message letting me know which pattern they would like uh, to have added to their library and I will buy it for you and send it to you via Ravelry. So uh, pick a pattern on Ravelry, send me a message on Ravelry and I will add that to your Ravelry library, <laughs> uh, courtesy of the podcast. Um, yeah, so I went to YouTube comment picker and uh, had it fetch the comments from the February makes video. Couldn't remember the name. Uh, and the randomly chosen winner is Linda C. So Linda C, yay! You win the pattern prize this month. Um, Linda commented about, oh, I was talking about mask mandates last time. Um, and I still have to wear a mask at work. Um, but I don't have to wear one to go shopping at the grocery store anymore, which is really nice. <laughs> I feel like I can breathe again. Uh, but Linda commented on the mask mandate, uh, and she, I'm assuming she, uh, said Philadelphia lifted the mask mandate in buildings so I don't have to wear one at work now. Uh, I have to admit that it feels really weird not to wear one every time I go to the bathroom or lunchroom, etc. <laughs> I always feel like I'm forgetting something. Um, and Linda still wears one at the stores, which is understandable. Uh, yeah, I <laughs> uh, there are some places where I still have to wear my mask and then other places that I don't have to wear my mask. So I still always have to make sure I have it with me because if I need to swing by the pharmacy and pick up medicine, I have to have my mask and whatever. So uh, yeah, I feel like that's gonna be a struggle for the next year. Let's be honest, it's probably gonna be the next year that I'm still like, I have to wear a mask here, but not there. And so I should just always have it with me. But anyway, thank you, Linda, for your comment. I really appreciate it. Uh, glad to hear things are going well in Philly. And uh, just send me a um, a message on Ravelry, letting me know which pattern you would like, and I will purchase it for you. Uh, my contact info is down below in the description box. So my Ravelry username, um, Instagram, uh, are down there so you can message me either way and um, for other folks out there who want to friend me follow me whatever please do <laughs> um, I love being able to see uh, the things that you're creating and working on uh, you are all such an inspiration and I really appreciate our little community here so thanks for joining me for this video I hope to get the April video out on time. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna leave it as that. <laughs> we'll see how things go, but uh, yeah. I hope that you stay safe and healthy and well, and that you enjoy your crafts, whatever they may be. Take care until next time.